So you passed, you did really well. How'd it go, bro? I got above target in all three areas. And while I was taking the test, I was really, really focused. And one of the big pieces of advice I would say, if you're taking the test and you're not focusing, try to focus, you know, so take a lot of practice tests. But when you start to focus, like laser focus while you're taking the test, you're actually going to see patterns in how they ask questions and how the answers are structured. So some of the things that Scott talked about in our questions made easy, they're very relevant. Relevant. So answers that have anything to do with excluding people, those are going to stand out really like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to exclude people in, you know, anything because it's about being a good project manager and projects operate solely by the means of a team. So I would review a lot of the, the content around how to answer certain questions. Also, I, all of my questions, I, I won't say all of them, but I would say 99.5% of my questions were situational around, you know, what would the project manager do next or what should the project manager have done to avoid waterfall and agile. But the thing about it is that there's a mindset of a project manager, whether it be waterfall or it be agile, a lot of the mindset is the same. Now, given processes, you know, if you in the questions, the answers will differ, but the mindset of being a good project manager is the one thing that you can read all of the questions and be like, that would be a bad project manager. And so, yes, the 49 processes, make sure you know that and the key outputs, yes, but more than just know them, apply the project management mindset to the 49 processes. Yes, from, you know, the product backlog artifact and all the other artifacts and the uh, ceremonies, know those, yes but you apply the project management mindset to those. Yeah, and that's, that's all I have for right now. If anybody has any questions. That's awesome, man. I love the philosophy. Well, let's just jump some... People are coming in here, eight o'clock, 30 people. Donovan just passed, did an amazing job. He's sharing and we got some more people coming in. But uh, anybody if you got any questions for Donovan, throw them in there. Which, what, anybody got some questions? Donovan, how did you know you were ready from, from taking the practice test here? When did you feel like you were ready? Okay, so I'm very self-conscious. I'm just going to throw that out there. So, so when it comes down to it, it's about you trusting your coaches, trusting Scott, Matt, Kelly was my accountability coach. And so Kelly specifically, once I made a certain grade on my practice test, she said, uh, I think you're ready. And just from the feedback in the class, she said, oh, I think you're ready. So I had my test originally set for the 28th of March, but you know, according to her, I was ready back in February. And so I just, you know, was on the PMI website and I was like, look, if she says I'm ready because she's done this, because here, here's the, th here's the truth, Scott, everybody else, they see hundreds of us, you know, and they know they have not, how we're studying the test. They're studying us as students. And so they have become subject matter experts in students and in the tests. So it's important for you to trust their opinion on your performance. Thank you. Dude, that is true. That is crazy. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Lee, you had a, thank you. Uh, Lewis, Lee, you got a question, sir? Yeah, so I was just curious, uh, based on uh, one of the things you said after taking the practice test and everything, what would you consider to be too much? Because you have people who are of different mindsets who are like, hey, I'm going to crush all these different tests, these practice tests. And then you have some that are like, hey, I'm going to crush a couple, see how my coach reacts. If they tell me I'm good, I'm done and I don't do any more. What was your well, path? Well, me, I'm a little bit different because... I am able to shut down everything. Like if I don't want to go to work, I can plan to not go into work and literally focus on studying. But I did that afterwards, uh, after I was told that I was ready. And so I can be a little bit obsessive. Now, if you honestly, if you if you're making, you know, around 80s, you know, on your practice test, 70s, in that area on your practice tests, I think you don't need to be nervous. But if you want to go the extra mile and just because I watched I watched Scott's whole series twice. Not only that, but I had notes and stuff like that. So me going through it once was enough, but I just really wanted to make sure. So I don't think there's a such thing as too much. Honestly, I don't. That's just my personality and my and your stress tolerance is your stress tolerance. Ultimately, if the coaches say you're good, I would go with that. Cause you can waste time after after so long of studying. Like you, like the the best you can get is a hundred. No matter how much more studying you do, you're not going to improve your grade. Yeah, awesome. Thanks uh, for the info and congrats. No problem. Awesome, Thank you. Dude.
Uh, so I, I passed mine on the third. So I, and then I, I got real busy the week after that with work, but mm -hmm. yeah. So I think Donovan already mentioned a little bit, but you know, you're, you're going to know when you're ready for me. I, I thought I needed more time in my mind. I started in January and my goal was to be taking the exam by the end of March. And honestly, once I, and then I couldn't get my exam date. <laughs> I couldn't get it. Yeah. And then it was giving me like May 16th. And, and so I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it in May. And then I, I couldn't sleep for a few nights. I was thinking, well, I'm going to be th having this stuff in my brain till May. I mean, that's, that's way too long. <laughs> so, yeah. so then I, I decided, okay, as long as I can just go in and get any date in March, it doesn't matter what day it is. I'm just going to book it in March. And this was by this time it was maybe two weeks uh two weeks out from March mm -hmm. and so I did I, I got you know I got a date I got a morning slot I booked it because the as you get closer and closer within that two-week window you'll, you'll see some dates opening up that you didn't see before in a test center near you so I booked it and once I had it on the calendar I I was a little stressed because mm -hmm. the stress factor for me was really not my knowledge of the material it was about the length of the test and the test anxiety and the there is a physicality to just sitting there for hours and being focused right so i watched those videos that you did with emily scott which i thought were very helpful in in just trying to stay focused on it doing that perfect pacing just 60 mm -hmm. second 60 questions at a time and then the perfect pacing being 25 questions every 30 minutes yeah. so i did it for myself because of my anxiety, I wrote down all the risks that I, uh, all the reasons for my anxiety, which in my mind were basically risks. What are the risks that I have to not passing? Oh, wow. So I used what, what we do in our daily life with project management. And I said, okay, what's the risk of me not passing? One, uh, you know, timing timing, right? So I needed to focus on getting faster in, in my answers and doing that consistently. The other was the test anxiety, which I used a lot of the techniques that you and Emily uh, showed in your videos. And, and then just the overall length of it. So I went I did a dress rehearsal the Friday before I woke up at five in the morning, which is when I would have to wake up for the day of my test. I, I took the simulation test that mm -hmm. you have. I did that. I did that. I did three of them. So I, I did the exact thing that I would do on the day of, and I was exhausted, <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but it got me ready and it got me mentally prepared. And I, I, I averaged a pass across the three tests. So I felt pretty good about that. And in the last one, I was already getting pinged at work. And so I really rushed it. I, I, I did 60 questions in 45 minutes. And so I knew I would have enough time to go back and check my work if I needed to. But yeah, it was, uh, it's a great feeling passing. And uh, Emily is, is not kidding. The congratulations is so small. So it's very, <laughs> it doesn't feel like you, like you should get the uh, recognition you, you, you deserve when you finally pass at, in that moment. But it was great. It's a great feeling. And, um, that's great. All right. I got a question for you both. Like there's a lot of newbies here and a lot of people that's like, goodness me, they got family, job, life, dogs, cats. They got everything in their life. Yeah, yeah. Like, how did you make time to study? How did you organize yourself? And like, how did you make progress? Because you both finished pretty quickly in a sense. Like, how did you do it? Yeah, I, for, you know, you have to make some sacrifices. You have to put in the work. And I, when it came to, I, so I, you know, getting on these calls, you're already doing some work. I, I told myself that I had to study consistently for at least an hour or two every day and mm -hmm. then three to four hours on the weekends. And I, I made that commitment to myself because I wanted to be done. Um, and then as a week, the week approached, I, I padded on an extra hour. I woke up an hour early mm -hmm. and I, I did some more time on the weekend. So I just, I, you just kind of have to find the time and hopefully you have a supportive partner yeah. <laughs> or a supportive stuff in, you know, a support system that right. can help pick up the slack. Um, my husband has now co cooked two dinners a week when I was on the coaching call. So that's great. So now he can cook two, two dinners a week consistently. And I have fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Donovan, and, and then we'll Christina follow up. There's different ways. Everybody learns in a different way. Like 
when you got into it, what do you think helped you bring things together? Was it like talking it through, watching the videos? Like what helped you learn, dude? Yeah. So I think having a bit of familiarity just with the words initially, mm -hmm. like the definitions, that helps a lot because you going into it with no understanding of what he's saying, what, what the de definitions are, you can't even create meaningful flows, in, yeah. you know, mental connections at that point because you're always stopping. You're like, what does this word mean? Blah, blah, blah. What does this word mean no. so i would suggest you know to spend time if you, you could do it one or two ways you can you know the evaporating data dump is real you should definitely take notes as you're going but so what i did to help me study is i was very intentional with my time um i work odd hours sometimes so i'm i cut everybody out from like hey ma hey so and so so and so don't call me at from this time to this time because i'm going to be looking over blah 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 whatever they it is so I was looking over definitions at a point in time and now that I got these definitions I can flow through the information and actually use the evaporating data dump using it for definitions in the middle of the of the video lessons I would actually be using it for like okay how does this make sense I'll write it down and so I can stay focused um so I would say if you if you're lacking in the in the terminology a lot of people coming from maybe the military world would possibly be lacking in the terminology uh i would say uh definitely start there get the terminology at least be familiar with it and then uh be serious about your time so if you have a weekend be you know be disciplined with your time on the weekend four yeah. hours you got a whole life to live you know four hours won't hurt you that's really great all right we'll do a follow-up with christina christina like as you got toward the end of the exam you had a hard time to to find the 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 time to get in there uh you just recommend they go there they keep checking like these things open up right because a lot of people worry that they can't find it like you just have to had to keep Keep going back there and like seeing like you know did a spot open did a spot open is that how it went just to reiterate with you yeah, yeah absolutely when you get to that two week one week time frame where you you want to take your test and you're not seeing any openings just go in daily that's what i did i went in and then i found an open slot if you feel like you're ready and you need to get a book yeah. that's that's what i did um there was nothing in april so yeah just you have to kind of just stay on it one of the things that i did when i was there in the test center i didn't use the scratch paper for anything really yeah. or whatever that is i did write three things down though i wrote down pmi hat okay to just remind myself when I'm in there, I'm wearing my PMI hat and then to focus. And then I needed a positive affirmation, which, you know, which was, you got this. And okay. so I, I just, I, and then during the break, when I did my first break, I have to say, I didn't feel great in the first 60 questions. I flagged about 17 questions and I felt mm -hmm. a little shaky in the first 60, but I had enough time to review it. And I also didn't want to get stuck using a lot of extra time in that first 60 questions. Um, um, but the other tip that I got from you and Emily in your videos was, you know what, you answer it, you move on. Don't let yeah. the weight of that uneasiness go into the next question or even the next set of questions. So that definitely, definitely really helped. Yeah. And then there's the, the coaching calls, you know, just breaking them down. But for me, the biggest barrier to a lot of this was really the PMI hat and the okay. vocabulary. A lot of this is familiar territory, but there's a different lens you have to put on. And that was, uh, that's not, that was not second nature to me. So um, that, these are all, like, I love the insights. You guys got, we got to get into the news calls just to let everybody know as well. One of the other things that we're doing as the back is I've started getting a lot of evaporating data dump things and questions from people as I lead different calls and uh, I am doing short. All right. So just to finish off last thing, what recommendation, short, quick, positive something for them like Donovan, take it away. What, what, what would you tell the people in the um, so this was actually the most problematic thing about me while I was taking the test. Uh, okay. It was incredibly cold in the building that I was in. <laughs> so seriously, okay. I mean, I was shivering while I was taking the test. I would do everything that you can do to be prepared. If you're taking it on a, in a test site, bring a coat, uh -huh. bring some snacks, know where you can get snacks in the building. If you, so you could eat during your break, possibly the one that I was at, they allowed me to have some snacks if I wanted them like a banana or something like that. Um, right. You know, that's what I would honestly because it was a big issue for me. It was so cold. Yeah, I was literally shivering. Cold, cold and fed is not a bad bad way to be. All right. We got to go into questions. Christina, Donovan, we appreciate it a thousand times. We'll continue to stay in touch. We got plenty of cool stuff coming. Enjoy your, you know, your time off. And uh, thanks again. And we'll see you soon. See ya.